uh, it's been really random, a process, random process. Um, where is it? Like this, just play notes. Because I have the kind of funk groove in my blood, you know? So I just play the stuff um, on the keyboard. It's actually very easy. Dun, 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 dun. It's just, again, there's some speech like this. Probably you can see the automation over there. Yeah, it's just pitch things. I use a lot the pitch, the pitch bend in my bass line because it kind of, it's not static bass line really. It gives you some movement all the time. But just very random the way I do it until it sounds right. Edit uh, in the MIDI notes and it is the way it is, I think. <laughs> do, you, do you use it as much like shuffle or groove quantize? Yes. Um, on that one, not that much. I think the quantize was about 20%. Uh, so the quantize is, uh, it's too bad there's no memory of the quantize on Ableton. But uh, Apple, uh, Control, Apple, uh, yeah, well, it's Command, huh? Command, yeah. Shift, U, and then you got the, the little window for the shuffle, which is set on 70% here, but it's because of a track I did before. But I think that one was about 116T and 20% shuffle. I always use shuffle anyway on all my tracks, but it gives this kind of swing, funk in the music. Otherwise, if it's really too straight, I'm not happy with that. I like to have this kind of funky shuffle things. I usually between 20% up to 70, 75%, which is really swingy, swingy a lot. If it's 99%, it's really like really shuffle. People like call it triplet, but it's the wrong, it's not triplet. It's really shuffle swing. So yeah, this is how I did my bass line very randomly again. Pretty much everything is done randomly here. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat myself all the time, but everything I do all the time is really, uh, that's why I call my label mistakes, because everything I do is all done by mistakes. And um, so my beat, I always start with a kick, so that's very easy. But when I did that remix, uh, I didn't have the part because Eric told, asked me to do the remix and I said, yeah, great. And I, I just sampled uh, the parts from the, from the original, which is just uh, this. I actually sampled the notes from the original and put it in Impulse, uh, which I use a lot for my drums, even for the music, like I did here. You can hear uh, each. So you can detune every note. So this is how I did the recreate the, the original uh, melody. With some delay, EQ, but I add some extra layers uh, for harmony on the, a second channel. With some effects. It's different note, there's a side chain also here. So you play both together. Uh, but again, uh, the, how I did the harmony and stuff, I just did it by with my ears. I don't really program anything in my head. Okay, it's going to sound like this. I just put the notes, record the notes, and then from there, just edit which notes going to sound right or not, or nice together. And I got the... But I, I use Impulse a lot because it's so flexible for me, which I'm from the sampler uh, generation, uh, because you can, every note, you can change the tone, you can adjust the time. I don't know if I can play it here. Uh, where is it? The key up. No, here, no, yeah. Right, so I can just adjust the time. Make it super short. Change the notes. This is pretty much how I do it. Every music I do is a lot with impulse and actually not with a plug-in synthesizer, which is straight, pretty strange, but I do it like that. It's easier. And yeah, all together, I don't know how to explain, it just it works.
um, now a lot of people ask me how do I arrange the whole thing. Um, obviously, uh, I'm a DJ, so I like to have a long beginning and long ending to mix the track. But this one actually starts already with a kind of full build up with all um, well, the people who know the remix will recognize that. I sing out of the box, like how it's gonna sound in the mix, but in my mix. So I'm not really singing about how it's gonna sound in other DJ mix, it's just in the way I'm gonna mix it. So I make a really long intro with a lot of uh, reverb as a send to. Um, right here in an Indian. I have no idea. It must be. Uh... It says here Xfer, so I took it from the Xfer CD sampler from uh, Dead Mouse. <clears throat> it must be something, uh, a crash, which I changed and, and reversed. So pretty much it was. And there was another big reverb kind of. Well, like, it was like this, I just reversed it, so it's very simple, so you can use it. There's another one here, which is the, actually the sound of the, the, the lead, the main lead, but reversed with a reverb, like this. I do that a lot also to kind of uh, bring some, the next pattern or the next things you bring the the things very smooth so i do that quite a lot every year I, i'm not a big fan of plugins to be honest everything i use is just from ableton uh, a part of i have the wave uh, which is really good for especially for mastering or for the main master here i'm using I have actually uh, the Cytomic, it's the beta version, I, I still have the beta version, I don't have the final one. But the Cytomic glue uh, compressor is always on the master for me, very gentle. Then I have a nice uh, BB Sonic Maximizer for to bring back uh, the bass I lost with the compression, because the more you compress, the more you kind of lose the bottom. So I just bring it back with this and high frequencies. And then I have L1, uh, just to kind of push up the volume, really. And that's pretty it. Uh, I'm not, well, I've this just to, um, the analyzer, just to see how the, well, I don't believe this anyway. I, I never really watch it. I actually use it for, to see the stereo thing, but I don't really uh, see the, um, the EQ, uh, Analyzer, anyway, just I use my ears. Right? If, it does, if it sounds good with my ears, that's just that's enough for me. The the, the drum are pretty simple on this one. It's very uh, just. You know, it's very basic, right? Uh, again, that must be impulse. Put my snare in there. A little compression, a little EQ. Uh, the clap is just, yeah, audio, the white noise for the hi hat. I'm using that a lot also in my tracks. Uh, it's the white noise uh, from Ableton again. It's very handy to, uh, to make your own hi hat and it's flexible because you can move the decay and all that stuff like here. You can use it I hat or white noise, but I use it as a to make my hi hat. Actually, to layer it because I layer a lot. Um, one of my tricks actually is layering the same hat. But I have a hat like this, but doesn't sound big enough, so I just duplicate this channel, and it's the same here. But I use the vinyl distortion uh, plugin to kind of make it more dirty and more, more crunchy. So I layer the original plus the new one with the vinyl distortion. And so I have this kind of 
less clean sound because in the beginning it was too clean for me like very thin digital so I always layer my, my hats like this and it brings some kind of better stereo thing as well if I check open the analyzer I don't have much stereo there and if I do my layer thing I uh, like this <laughs> kind of stereo thing on the hats and the shaker I mean it's just like chick 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 you know <laughs> again in impulse because it gives me the opportunity to uh, uh, quantize things edit shuffle or not if it was just audio just to drag an audio it's just not flexible anymore so everything goes to impulse and then and again they hear this vinyl distortion over it otherwise it would have been too you know so I kind of highlight my sound a little bit dirty crunchy it reminds me of the good old analog thing where I'm come from <coughs> I cut I cut more than I boost yes because I think rule number one is picking up the right sounds because the more you have to EQ and stuff the more you're gonna add some wrong frequencies or bad sounds or whatever so I prefer to cut than to to add something like here I don't know what did I cut I cut the bass otherwise it would have been too it also sends a completely change the whole sound actually but yeah it, it's just it's so important uh, like the kick the kick sounds right from the beginning but I just add a little bit more bottom and um, I always boost the high frequencies to have this sort of more snappy attack on every kick. You can see here that like otherwise it's just So you find that by just putting it on full and then sweeping through until you find that clicky noise and then pull it back down? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I basically I have a collection of four kicks. <laughs> so I can't go wrong with my kicks. I just use always the same kicks all the time pretty much because I know that sounds right. I don't want to spend hours uh, to do a, a kick. So sometimes I create my own kicks, which I did in uh, a track called Le Moustique, uh, which is over there, uh, with Ableton again. I did create my own, well, creates a big word, right? I just used uh, the plugin from Ableton called Kix 606 with a really, like I said before, really uh, crazy high EQ on the high frequencies to really make the click comes even better. Right, so this one. So this is without the EQ. Thank you, ping pong. And if I add the EQ, it's really clicking but I also layer I always layer my kick or most of the time with another one without the bass for instance this one is a 707 kick so it sounds like this normally so I layer the, this one with a big one and I have a really fat snappy kick I also make uh, sure that the timing uh, over there um, the timing of the how you say that like the transient the snap yeah because obviously how they're gonna be placed in in the in the track it's it changed a lot so this is with my this is zero milliseconds for the big one and the tr 707 is minus three and so if i move it back to zero it sounds like weird not so nice anymore so i kind of adjust timing minus one minus two until it sounds like that right snap I, I like and uh, yeah with with the bass line so you, you can really hear pretty much everything on my bass line here otherwise it would have been kind of not so good anymore so I do that a lot with the timing also you can hear you can see there's a the percussion here is minus two milliseconds. Uh, here, there's some 
claps also as well for the snap the 808 claps so this again kick and claps only together so the clap is minus two if it was zero well the, the, the difference is not really big here but it's it has a lot of snap if you change yeah here's a power i can hear it it's just For me, it's very important to have like a really good attack on every song. It's just some people like to have like round thing. Some people like like really snappy. I like the really snappy thing. And then you know you can hear very attacky sounds. And again, I think the master is the same: a cytomic compression, gentle, not crazy. Uh, again, the same thing to bring back the bass. There's an EQ8 for a change. It's not happening very often, but there is an EQ8. L1 for the master, and uh, that's it, really. There's no big secret in my uh, mastering. <laughs> well, that, and that's it with your mastering. That's it straight straight out to, to B4 or to wherever it's going. No, then after it going to uh, the um, it going to uh, the mastering, which is. Uh, I forgot, it will come back later. Uh, who press the vinyls, so it needs a special mastering, obviously. Oh, like mastering yeah, yeah, professional thing. So to just boost a little bit more in general bass and high and make sure that the vinyl is not gonna distort too much. Because kind of very different things. It could go on beat port like this, but we do it at the same time, so we deliver some proper quality sounding thing. But Pretty much, it's there's no big difference with my master and the final master from the from the mastering.